Welcome back to Gyms. My name is Melissa Mitchell from here in Australia, Abundant Life Studio. Today, I am reacting to part two of a series that I've been reacting to. How to prove to an atheist that the Quran's God is God's word, part two with Dr. Zakia Naik. He has 3.26 million subscribers, which is huge. This video was uploaded five years ago um, and has about 39,000 views, which for him, he usually gets a lot more. So let's try and bump that up for him. I'm going to watch this. But before we do uh, push play, make sure you hit that subscription button below. If you like this video and you like this reaction, give us leave us the thumbs up. And if you have any comments, comment below as well. And, of course, suggest gyms to a friend. So let's get started. How to prove to an atheist that the Quran is God's word, part two. I've listened to part one. I'm not sure what else he can say, but let's let's hear in part two because he's a very knowledgeable man, so I'm sure he's got a lot more to add to it. So we'll push play there and we'll see how it goes. Here we go. Many of the atheists, they believe in science. All these True. arguments may not satisfy them completely. Many of the atheists, they say that science is a yardstick. They believe science is ultimate. So let's try and prove to this group of atheists also about the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if I know that this atheist believes only in science, after congratulating him, I'll ask him a simple question. That if suppose there is equipment, there is a gadget who no one in the world has ever seen. And if that gadget is bought in front of you, and then the question is asked, that who will be the first person who will be able to tell you the mechanism of this gadget? That atheist, he may say, after thinking for a while, the first person who will be able to tell you the mechanism of a gadget who no one in the world has ever seen, no one in the world knows about it, he will tell you that the creator of the gadget. Or he may say the maker of the gadget. He may say the inventor. He may say the producer. He may say the manufacturer. Whatever he says, it will be somewhat similar. Either creator, manufacturer, producer, yeah. maker, inventor, somewhat similar. Just keep that answer at the back of your mind. The second person is the creator, if he says to somebody else, he'll come to know, or a person who does research, but that is secondary. You ask this atheist that how did our universe come into existence? So he will tell you that our universe was initially one primary nebula. Then there was a secondary separation, a big bang, which gave rise to galaxies, stars, yeah. moon, sun, and the earth on which we live. This he calls as the Big Bang. Yeah. You ask him, when did you come to know about this creation of the universe, about the Big Bang? He will tell you about 50 years back. 40 years back. So you tell him, this thing what you're mentioning about the Big Bang is already mentioned in the Quran 1400 years ago. In Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 30, where Allah says, Avalam yaral lazina kafuru. Do not the unbelievers see anna samawati wal arda kaan atrat kan fatakna huma that the heaven and the earth were joined together and we close them asunder. Wow. What you're talking about, the Big Bang, is already mentioned in the Quran 1400 years ago. Who could have mentioned this in the Quran? So yeah. he will tell, maybe it's a fluke. Somebody wrote it? No problem. Don't argue with him. Ask him the next question. What is the shape of the earth? So he will tell you, previously the human beings thought that the world was flat. It was in 1577, when Sir Francis Drake, he sailed around the earth that he proved that the earth was spherical. You tell him that the Quran mentions in Surah Nazia, chapter number 79, verse number 30, that we have made the earth X shape. The Arabic word daha, one of its meaning is an expanse, and the earth is an expanse. The other meaning is derived from the Arabic word duya, which means an egg. And we know today that the earth is not completely round like a ball. It is starting from the pole and bulging from the center. It is geospherical in shape. It is somewhat similar to the egg. And the Arabic word duya does not refer to a normal egg. It yeah. specifically refers to the egg of an ostrich. And if you analyze the shape of wow. the egg of an ostrich, it is geospherical in shape. Imagine the Quran mentioned that the earth is geospherical 
1400 years ago who could have mentioned that mm. so he will tell you ah your prophet muhammad peace be upon him was an intelligent man don't argue continue the light of the moon is it its own kind of reflected light so the atheist will tell you previously we thought that the light of the moon was its own light but today we know that the light of the moon is not its own light it's a reflected light when do you come to know he will tell you we came to know yesterday 50 years back 100 years back 200 years back quran mentions 1400 years ago in surah furqan chapter number 25 verse number 61 that blessed is he who has placed the constellations, constellations in the sky and, and then sun shams having its own light and moon having borrowed light the arabic word for wow. sun is shams its light is always described as siraj or hajj meaning a torch or a blazing lamp and the moon in arabic is called as qamar its light is always described as munir or noor munir means borrowed light and noor means the reflection of light and nowhere is the moonlight described as the hajj or siraj it's always described as noor or munir borrowed light or reflection of light who could have mentioned this in the quran 14 years ago now there'll be a pause no need for the reply continue when i was in school i had learned that the sun revolved but it was stationary it did not rotate about its axis the quran says in surah ambiya chapter number 21 verse number 33 huwa allazi khalaqa al-layla wan nahara it is allah who has created the night and the day wa shamsa wal qamar the sun and the moon kull lun fi falaqi yasbahun each one traveling in an orbit with its own motion the arabic word yasbahun describes the motion of a moving body and if it's talking about celestial body it means that this sun and the moon besides revolving it's also rotating about its own axis and today science tells us that the sun takes approximately 25 days to complete one rotation imagine what i read in school i finished my school in 1982 sun was stationary 1982 for the years before the quran says the sun rotates mm. and my science book said the sun was stationary today it has been incorporated that the sun rotates yeah you ask him and who could have mentioned this there'll be a silent pause some critics will say it's nothing great that the quran speaks about astronomy because the arabs were advanced in the field of astronomy i do agree the arabs were advanced in the field of astronomy but i have to remind them that it was centuries after the quran was revealed that the arabs became advanced in the field of astronomy so it is from the quran that the arabs learned about astronomy and not the vice versa in the subject of hydrology and you ask the atheist that you ask him about the water cycle he will tell you that the water evaporates from the ocean yeah it forms into clouds the cloud moves in the interior it falls on as rain and the water is replenished we ask him when did you come to know this he will tell you it was in 1580 when sir bernard parsi he spoke about the water cycle for the first time 1580 wow so you tell him what you came to know in 1580 just hardly couple of 100 years before the quran mentions 1400 years ago the quran says the water evaporates from the ocean formed into the clouds the clouds move and join the moon is the interior and they fall on as rain and the water is finished the water cycle is spoken in the quran in great detail in several places especially surah az-zumur chapter 39 verse number 21 in surah rum chapter number 30 verse number 24 in surah hijr chapter number 15 verse number 22 in surah mu'minun chapter number 23 verse number 18 in surah rum chapter number 30 verse number 48 in surah nur chapter number 24 verse number 43 It's mentioned in Surah Naba, chapter number seventeen, verse number twelve to fourteen. It's mentioned wow. in Surah Araf, chapter number seven, verse fifty-seven. In Surah Raj, chapter number thirteen, verse number seventeen. It's mentioned in Surah Furqan, chapter number twenty-five, verse number forty and forty-nine. It's mentioned in Surah Yasin, chapter number thirty-six, verse number thirty-four. It's mentioned in Surah Fatir, chapter number thirty-five, verse number nine. It's mentioned in Surah Jasha, chapter number forty-five, verse number five. In Surah Kaf, chapter number fifty, verse number nine and ten. It's mentioned in Surah Waqiah, chapter number fifty-six, verse number sixty-seven to seventy. It's mentioned in Surah Tariq, chapter number six, verse number eleven. I can go on and go on and go on, quoting only the verses in the Quran which speak about the water cycle. Only the Quran speaks about the water cycle in great detail. Who could have mentioned this in the Quran fourteen years ago? Don't reply. Don't worry. Continue. 
the Quran speaks about geology. The geologists say that the radius of the earth is 3,750 miles. The deeper layers are hot and fluid. The upper layer is a thin crust. Yeah. Hardly 1 to 20 miles in thickness. And there are high possibilities it will shake. It is due to the folding phenomena which gives rise to mountain ranges which prevents the earth from shaking. Allah mentioned this in the Quran. It's mentioned in the Quran. In Surah Naba, chapter number 78, verse number 7, as well as 8, Allah says, We have made the earth as an expanse and the mountains aspects, which science has agreed today. A similar message is mentioned in Surah Ambiya, chapter 21, verse number 31, that we have placed on the earth mountain standing firm, lest it would shake with you. In the field of oceanology, previously we knew that there were two types of water, salt and sweet. But the Quran says in Surah Furqan, chapter 25, verse number 53, that it is he who has let free two bodies of flowing water, one sweet and palatable, the other salty and bitter. Though they meet, they do not mix. There is a barrier which is forbidden to be trespassed. We knew that there were two types of water, but what does the Quran mean there is a barrier which is forbidden to be trespassed? Today we know that whenever one type of water flows into the other type of water, it loses its constituents and gets homogenized into the water it flows. This homogenizing wow. area is called as a barrier, a barzakh in the Quran. Quran mentioned this 14 years ago. Quran mentioned about biology. It's mentioned in Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 30. We have created every living thing from water. Will you not then believe? Who could have believed in the deserts of Arabia that everything is made from water? Today, science tells us that every living thing is made from water. Ah. Okay, so that was part two. Um, that went very fast for me because it was very interesting. So I got lost in the time and, and quite enjoyed that. He, he knows, he has so much knowledge and, and to recite the verses. Like, it's very impressive. Um, I'm interested to see part three. I acknowledge that these things are in the Quran from 14, 1,400 years ago. Um, it is amazing. Um, yeah, like, I do acknowledge that it's in there. I just, being an atheist, I just don't know. Uh, whether, you know, someone back then had some, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not even going to speculate on that. I, I'll, I'll have a look at part three and see what it is. If you haven't watched part one yet, make sure you go back and watch that. Um, that sort of finished right mid-sentence. So I'm, I'm interested to see what part three is. So I I don't have much to say about that one. He He's a very knowledgeable man, but... My, you know, I'm, I'm still believing in science and things like that, but I can see, I acknowledge that that's in the Quran as well, you know, about the earth being, you know, the egg shape and um, about the water and uh, the, the constellations and, and the moon with the borrowed um, light and everything. It's very interesting. So make sure you watch part three, which is coming, or if you're watching the, you know, uh, this down the track. It's it's already been uploaded, so make sure you, you skip through and watch that. Um, so I'm going to head over to that now. You've been watching How to Prove to an Atheist. The Quran is God's Word, Part 2. Dr. Zaik, uh, Zakia Naik, he's a very knowledgeable man, interested to see Part 3. Make sure you drop your comments below and let's go and have a look at Part 3. We'll see you then. Bye.